Hey guys and welcome to episode 17 of how to be a 3D animator. Sorry, no cam today. I'm quite sick and to be honest, I look like absolute sh**. We're just gonna head right into exactly how I made the clip you guys are watching right now. First step was an idea. I actually made this piece on the weekend for the Anim Challenge group over at Facebook. The theme of this month was video game emote. So with that, I got to recording. This is the reference I ended up going with. I popped it right into Maya by going to view, image plane, import movie. And of course started out with blocking and fleshing out some of the key poses of the animation. After a little bit, we ended up with this blocking pass. There isn't a lot of detail since I don't have too much time. I decided to tackle the more finer details during the animation section. So I went ahead and splined blocking and I ended up with, with this. At this point, I was ready to crawl into fetal position and cry, but I had a video to make. So I collected myself back up and got to work. After a bit more, well, honestly just fixing at this point and retiming a lot of the stuff because this blind look way too floaty. Even after adding some uh, in-betweens and easing in and easing out, uh, the biggest thing I didn't like here was the way the character lands, especially where and the way his legs settle. Um, now at this point, it's already a lot more different than what we had in blocking, and that's okay. Your ideas change, you adapt to new information as you get it. That's just how it is. So once again, uh, some more tweaking and we ended up with spline 3. I like the landing a lot more in this version, and we started moving away from the reference a little bit to try and add some character and not have it just be some sort of mocap. Something still felt wrong. It, it felt slow and not really realistic. Not the animation itself, well the animation, but like mostly the reaction of the character. Maybe it was the timing. We talk about what it was a little bit later. So since I had been working on this for a while already, I went ahead and popped it into Sync Sketch. I have a video I'll link in the top right to show you guys exactly what that is. And I asked a very good friend of mine to take a look at it and let me know what she thinks. She drew out a couple poses on top of the video that were definitely more dynamic and had better silhouettes than the ones I had. Uh, one of them gave me the idea of the character cringing down in pain as he gets hit with the first shot. So I went ahead and ran with that. Spline 4. Now this I was actually starting to like. His reaction was a lot more genuine than before and it felt a lot more snappier and reactive to the actual events that were happening. And I think that's what was missing from the last spline. It was not a genuine reaction. He just got shot in the shoulder and he just leans back like nothing happened. Now, spline 5. Here, I was really focused on the more finer details, adding the finishing touches. I went ahead and animated his satchel and made sure the straps weren't intersecting. I fixed the head nodging weirdly when he hits the ground in the previous spline, that was one of the things I didn't like, and a couple more secondary animations. I also added the geos to visually show the character being hit, and at this point I was starting to get really happy with the animation. Spline 6. Okay, this is the last spline pass before we head to After Effects. Uh, for this pass, I added the textures to the bag, I added a texture to the backpack, I also added some more finger and secondary animation. On top of that, um, I actually went ahead and you guys can see the projectiles are pretty lit. <laughs> to get that sort of effect, I, um, I clicked on the projectile and I assigned, uh, held right click, assign new material. I, I went ahead and assigned the blend to it and when you press Control A, you can change to your attribute editor. Um, here I changed the color to green. I brought down the transparency. Well, it was already at zero, but all I did was just increase ambient light. So before it was something like this. And by increasing the ambient light, you get this sort of glowy effect. And another thing I did is actually the background. So let's just back out to that. So I went ahead and where's our character? Our character's right there, that little thing right there. What I did to get this background was just make a plane and I would go and select the edges. So we'll just double click on one line, select the edges. And if you press B, you can, con and, and if you hold B and you drag out and in, you can control how far out you want to control the different vertices, the different edges. So I just dragged it out a little bit and I would move it up 
and perhaps rotate it uh, to get this sort of uh, surface where it ramps upwards. So this way there's no hard shadows at all. And if you go back to this, as you can see there isn't really any hard shadows. There's a sort of a fade where it goes from um, slightly less saturated and darker to more saturated and slightly brighter. But aside from that, there's no hard edges, so there's not really hard on the eyes. Uh, you can just focus on the character. And to get this sort of texture for the background, I'm just going to go ahead and select it. I assigned the new material again, this time at Lambert. I selected the color I want over here. Uh, transparency and ambient all the way down. And all I did was just bring up Encondescence. I don't actually know how to pronounce that. So I just brought up the Encondescence um, to about 70%, 70, 80%. Uh, just bring it up to a point where you're comfortable with, where you like it. And that's it. And then I just play blasted it here. So now we reached After Effects. So I went ahead and popped my clip in. That would be this clip right here. So Spline 6.5. That's just my Play Blast. I put that in there. So I went ahead and downloaded this effect right here. And if you guys pay close attention, maybe I'll zoom in here. You'll be able to see it once the laser beam hits his shoulder. You can see that effect. And now let's just play it real time. There you go. And there's a smaller one on the right shoulder as well. I actually got these effects from Production Crate. This is a site that has hundreds upon hundreds of sound effects, visual effects. It has everything from cartoon to smoke, dust, which I did use actually. In the very end, I, when the character falls down, I added a puff of smoke coming up. And I got that as well from Production Crate. So I think you get about five free downloads. Uh, let's just go into it, check these out. I think you get about like five downloads a day, five free downloads. About like 70% of their content is pro content, but if you uncheck this, you can see all the free ones. And out of these, I think you can, again, you can do five downloads a day. So you guys can check that out. I'll have a link in the description for you guys. You can check out all the stuff they have to offer. But back to the After Effects, that's essentially all I did. I just, I added these little two hit these little two hits right here as the laser beams hit them and then um, for this dazed star thing this thing right here again I got that from uh, production crate as well I just downloaded that I um, went ahead to position transform position and I manually set keys because it's already going up and down so it doesn't actually matter if it's tracked perfectly or not because you can't really tell um, so I just added like five or six keys to follow the head and it just stops moving there. So, uh, But if you play it real time, you can't tell that it's not perfectly tracked because the stars themselves are going up and down. So it's literally as simple as that. Just We're just going to interrupt the video with this little insertion. I, I just want to thank you guys for a thousand subscribers. Um, this it's, it's honestly unbelievable to me. I was expecting to maybe hit 1000 by the end of the year, but we're like two to three months early, so thank you guys for that. I was hoping to have this done by by now, actually, but I did take a trip to San Francisco. So to be honest, I needed it, but uh, now I'm back, so I'm gonna be working on this full force. This is gonna be like an animation guide handbook, and this is gonna be part of the Patreon I'm gonna be starting. It's gonna be available to all the Patreons. It'll be available to anyone from the lowest tier to the max tier. Uh, and it'll be updated most likely monthly. It's a booklet that compacts all the information we've learned so far on this channel. I have some tips, I have some scripts that I use. There's a lot of information for you to look at as like a quick little handbook. Uh, maybe you're on the train, maybe you're commuting. Just have it on your phone and you can scroll through. And I also have codes and stuff to hotkeys, how to add the hotkeys. Just some of the, some of the tips I've learned throughout my experience of working on TV shows and whatnot. And I'll be, again, I'll be adding to this monthly. So I just, I just want to add a little announcement that this is in the works. So I'm about one third done. I'm going to be working on this full force after I finish this video. So fingers crossed it'll be done by next video. I don't want to be like Elon Musk just <laughs> promising more than I can handle right now. So we'll see. Once again, thank you guys so much for a thousand subscribers. It means a lot to me. And let's just jump right back into the video. Sorry about that. And so yeah, this is the, this is the final thing. This is the final version of the shot. Um, I ended it all with After Effects after play blasting. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you took something from it. And if you did, make sure to smash that like button, hit the sub button, stay notified of future videos. I upload weekly, happy animating, and I will see you guys in the next video.